Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brian Baptist Church on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. If there was no Christmas, there would be no Brian Baptist Church. There'd be no church. There'd be no salvation. There wouldn't be anything. But we celebrate the day that Jesus came, and it made all the difference for you and me. We're going to stand together. Brother Jim is going to lead you in songs, plural. So just letting you know. All right, 138, oh, come all ye faithful. Number 138, let's stand together if you can. <clears throat> Sing it out.
standing for prayer. Good morning, and uh, we are going to uh, thank God this morning for his amazing gift. Uh, this is the day where it all started. I can't begin to tell you how special this is. And uh, so uh, we want this day to be special for you. Some of you have already had a special morning. Some of you are going to have a special afternoon. Uh, I suspect for most of you that includes food, something about it, it but uh, that is okay. But let's reflect on the goodness of God and everything he's done for us. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this special day, how terrible it would be if we did all our activities and left you out. Because without you, none of this would happen. And so we thank you that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son. And the witnesses of the giving started on this day that we commemorate, that we call Christmas. The life, the eternal life of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was with you in creation, and by him all things consist. But the greatest thing that consists from him is our salvation, which he paid for with his blood. And so we want to come to you in thanksgiving and to remember all that you have done because it is so great. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I'm introducing to you for the first time the, the ladies plus one trio. <laughs> and so it'll take him a little while to get tuned in, but we'll get him tuned in. Uh, just ushers, if you could help me real quick, I need to pick up a couple coffee coasters here. And uh, specifically, I want us to get those to uh, two young ladies that uh, proved neither rain nor snow nor sleet nor hail. And so that is Megan who flew in all the way from Hawaii. And Sarah, we still don't know how she got here. I mean, we have no idea. We can't think of a time when the roads were good, but uh, she made it in from Idaho. Anyway, want to give those to you. Uh, um, I think you drink this. You can put your coffee cup on there. You can do that. So I want to give that to you. And Brother Jim's going to lead us in a couple more songs. All right, let's turn to 139. That is Born 
to die. Amen. 139.
I need everybody seated except the children. I need the children as fast as you can to come up here to rows one or two. Children, as fast as you can to rows one or two right now. This is a family service, so we're doing it family style, and we're going to read to you right here, these two rows right here, right over here. As we're going, we have the Christmas story for you today. And by the way, um, nursery service is very limited today. I think the only available place is right there. And so uh, at this time, so hurry up, 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 hurry, 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 hurry. Okay, and you're all, man, they're afraid to be in row one. Row one's a scary place. And so at this time, okay, we are going to be looking in our Bibles to Luke chapter 2 this morning the book of luke chapter 2 and this is the christmas story and at the end of the story i am going to give you a special bible lesson that lasts only 15 seconds wow okay so listen here and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed wow there were taxes a long time ago. Help me. Do your mom and dad like taxes? Yeah, neither do I. And it says, And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went out up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Let me ask a couple ladies here who are expecting. Do you like walking long distances while you're expecting? The answer is no. And you go, well, she rode a donkey, didn't she? Bible doesn't say that. Somebody invented that. She probably walked and got really, really tired. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. How many of you here think the innkeeper is the bad guy? Yeah, he's the bad guy in every Christmas play. The innkeeper's a bad guy. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. They were scared to death. If you were walking around in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden it looked like you were standing right in the middle of a flashbulb, you would be scared too. And the angels said unto them, Fear not, because angels always say, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for, to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So help me out here. What day is this day today? Very good. That's what it was in the Bible as well, Christmas. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Is there a manger here? Point to a manger. Anybody see a manger? Okay, very good. Manger recognition system. Very good. Okay. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. In fact, it says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Here is the lesson. It's only 15 seconds. 
Here it is. If the angels were so excited about Jesus coming and the shepherds were so excited about Jesus coming, you should be excited too. That's the lesson. You may walk fast back to your seats. I had to think about that. Okay, one other item of church business that I need to do in the middle of the service here. Kendra, if, if you can come up. Grandpa is going to assist there. And Kendra is coming up right now. And uh, she is festive today. Very interesting. Now, now I realize it's a holiday, okay? Do you think it's okay to vote in a church member on a holiday? Amen. That happens to be Christmas. That happens to be Christ's birthday. Okay, let me explain to you. God worked in Kendra's heart a few weeks ago, and she very wisely came to the realization. She searched God out and realized that she was not yet saved, and she wanted to take care of that, and she did. Very, very smart and wise thing to do. And then she knew what the Bible said. She followed the Lord in believer's baptism. Now, she has already read our church constitution 20 times over, and so, but she said, Pastor, when can I join the church? And I said to her, today's a good day. And so... In the church membership, all in favor of receiving Kendra Wilcox into the membership, say amen. Yes. Okay, nobody's opposed, especially not on Christmas Day. <laughs> and so, Kendra, welcome. And you can give her the right hand of fellowship at the end of service, and uh, you may go back. Amen. And now looking at announcements here, just going through here very, very quickly, um, different announcements we have. We will be... Uh, receiving an offering in just a moment. This will be the last official offering of the year, though on Wednesday we will uh, receive more for one very, very special offering, and that is our annual missionary offering. And if you want to give to that, all you have to write on the envelope is annual missionary offering. And if three words is too hard for you to remember, then write down Norris because the annual missionary offering is for the Norrises. And I know you look outside, you go, why would they want this? They need air conditioners in Zambia. And so we do not need air conditioners here right now, but they do. And so this is a special gift for them. This is your last opportunity, of course, to also give uh, to Faith Promise Missions or whatever the Lord would lead on your heart. But we want to let you know about that. What is going on this week, we'll have um, Subtle Care Bible Study. We'll have our regular Wednesday service and a Bible study and prayer meeting. And then on Saturday, we do have our New Year's Eve fellowship. And we have a white elephant gift exchange during that time. And so what we say is if you're a child, bring a child's gift. If you're an adult, bring in an adult's gift. Be sure to mark down if it's for a child or not. And, um, you know, we don't want, say, some six-year-old getting a men's shaver or something like that. And so be sure to mark that down. And also bring, uh, your, favorite, uh, bring your favorite snack or Christmas leftovers. It's okay. I love leftovers. And uh, we'll have table games and a few things. We're going to have a wonderful time. That'll be at 6 o'clock at um, New Year's Eve, and then on New Year's Day, it's everything's regular service, shuttles running, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. I'm going to be giving you the year theme. Uh, the posters have already, new banners have already been mailed. They are in the mail already, and unless we have three blizzards, they'll get here in time, and uh, so anyway, um, just looking forward to the new year. And so anyway, just want to let you know, don't want to uh, burden you with a whole lot of announcements, but I just wanted to give you those announcements. So at this time, uh, we're going to have uh, the men come forward and receive our Sunday morning offering again, opportunity we have to give to the Lord on Christ's birthday, on Christmas. So let's have a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask um, uh, Brother Glenn Miller if you would um, lead in prayer, please, for our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, Father. We pray you bless every soul here. We hear the gospel, we hear the preaching, Father, and be reminded of your sacrifice. We give you back. In Jesus' name. 
but he blessed the offering. Thank you, ladies. Well, before we stand and sing the next song, we have some unofficial business to take care of. Mrs. Watkins, would you please join your husband on the platform? No surprise, every year, come on. <laughs> well, you know, we, every year we take an offering for the pastor and his wife. Brother Jim, you shouldn't have. It's worse than that. Oh. It's, it's worse than that. You know, times are tough, uh, inflation, gas prices, and the best we could do for you was this card, and uh, in it is a gift certificate for lunch at McDonald's. <laughs> Sorry, times are tough. Actually, that's not true. We have, we have a check, we'll have a check for you on your desk after the service, or as soon as Lori can write it up. But uh, we want to just say we love you, we appreciate you, the work you've done. And um, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that we, we never know. We never know. We see the preaching, we see the Sunday schools, we see the piano playing, and, but there's so much more the pastor and his wife do. And we want to say we love you, appreciate you. you. And uh, I just think we ought to give them a little nice round of applause. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, we can go back to work now. And she's going back to work, and, and Lori, I'm sorry to ruin your day off. Um, but anyway, we want to let you know that we love you as well. We pray for you, and, uh, and we certainly want God's good and God's best for you. And it really is our prayer that God makes uh, this day very special for you. And as we look ahead to 2023, that he makes uh, year 2023 the best year ever. Amen. for Brian Baptist Church. And so Brother Jim is going to sing here. And by the way, these are mine. Oh. <laughs> oh, one more announcement. Uh, if you weren't here last week, we're starting a new Sunday school class. Next Sunday, it's in the book of Ezra. If uh, you weren't here, if you need, want to be a part of the Sunday school adults, these books are in the turnstile in the back. Please take one. <laughs> Read chapter one, do the homework, and we'll be all ready next Sunday to get into God's word. 137 in your hymn book, let's stand and before the message, joy to the world. 137.
singing by the congregation today. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 2. How many of you want to get out by noon today? You want to get out by noon today? Yes, so do I. We'll see what I can do. And so, um, all I can tell you is we're going to read a passage of Scripture and your lesson will be longer than 15 seconds. That's all I can tell you <laughs> this morning. Luke chapter 2, we're looking in verse 21. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. Let's look into the Word of God together. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, then his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And just letting you know, the days of purification were 40 days. So we're actually 40 days after Christmas at this point. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. For those of you who know the song on the first day of Christmas, on the second day of Christmas, it was two turtle doves. That's what they actually said in that song. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus for to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please now use your word in our hearts as a special way and help us, Lord, not simply to look upward at you and look outward at the day, but look inward at our own lives and answer one very important question. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. What is on your bucket list? What would you like to accomplish before you leave this earth? I can think of a former president his name was George Herbert Walker Bush. And on his 90th birthday, he checked off something on his bucket list. He went skydiving on his 90th birthday. And I am very, very glad for him. I'm here to let you know that is not on my bucket list. I have no interest in skydiving. I have a great fear of skydiving that the shirt would fail and then it would be on my bucket list because I would fit into a bucket. I, I do not like the concept. But maybe it's a trip. Maybe you want to take a trip. Maybe you want to, before you die, visit a special dignitary or a special place. For Simeon, it was meeting Jesus. It was 40 days later and the Son of God, who is God in the flesh, was presented to Father God. The King of the Ages was presented in humility. The King of the Ages was presented in poverty. Two turtle doves was the least you could give for that presentation. 
And except for Mary and Joseph, the king of the ages was presented in anonymity. Nobody knew who he was. But there was a man who was coming who knew who he was. And when he saw Jesus, his life could come to an end. What about you? When can your life come to an end? And I want to present three points that Simeon spoke with his own voice. Three things that you need to think about, that I need to think about before your life can come to an end. First is this. We have to answer the question. When can your life come to an end? First, when you finally see God's salvation. And the Bible indicates that the actual definition of God's salvation is Jesus. Let me point out this verse quickly. I'm going to be reading quickly to you the book of Isaiah chapter 9. I just want to read this found in verse 2. It says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. We all walk in the shadow of death without salvation. It's around the corner, and it's a shadow that looms. And if it is the shadow of death, there is no hope on the other side without salvation but we have the reality here that God's salvation is the definition of who Jesus is and it's the definition of his very name the name Jesus literally dictionary definition in the name your baby book is God is salvation that is the name the Bible says this in Isaiah chapter 45 looking at verse 22 It says, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. And what God is saying is, I don't know what you're looking for, but I am the only thing worth looking for because I'm the only one that can save you. When you finally see God's salvation, then your life can come to an end. It's the definition of Jesus, but secondly, Understand, Jesus cannot be a good person, teacher, or prophet. There's no salvation in that. A few years later, Jesus would present this question to his own disciples. And he would ask, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? There's an important question. Simon Peter, by the way, Simon Peter did not get everything right. Are are we in agreement with that? He did not get everything right. He did not answer everything right, but he got this right. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. Your life can come to an end when you finally see God's salvation. And it's in the definition of Jesus, and it's more than a Jesus that would be a good person, teacher, or prophet. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, and it is declared in God's Word that He is the only name that does save and the only name that can save. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. When can your life come to an end? When can it finally come to an end? First, when you see God's salvation. But secondly, and this is looking at the words of Simeon, when you see that Christ is your only source of hope. Simeon made this statement. 
He said a light to lighten the Gentiles. And the light means is synonymous in scripture with the idea of illumination, the idea of hope. When you see Christ is your only source of hope. And if you haven't figured this out now, I really hope you do. And that is whatever you are going through in life, man cannot help you. In fact, uh, King David realized that pretty early on. And he is a great military leader. But he said this in Psalm 60, verse 11. Give us help from trouble, speaking to God. For vain, it means empty, hopeless, purposeless. Vain is the help of man. And what did King David say in Psalm 118, verse 12? The exact same thing, word for word. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. So here we've established by the word of God that man cannot help you. And you know, we have some, um, some single men out here. We have some single ladies out here. So let me say this very careful. First to the single ladies. Man cannot help you. And I, I mean this real. A man cannot help you. Every lady that's in this room that has the title of wife realize that marrying a man equals the addition of responsibility. They can tell you that some problems were answered and others were created. Man, it's not much different with marrying a wife. Here's one way we can prove it. There was a man who married a wife, maybe as a spiritual man, but Jesus talked about it in a parable, and he said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Okay, men, take note of that. Vain is the help of man. Man cannot help you. Money cannot help you. And this is the antithesis of everything you are taught in the United States of America. Money cannot help you. What does God have to say? Well, in the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom, it says, Wilt thou set thine eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Or how about in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, looking at verse 9, where the scripture says, but they that will be rich, it means they set their will. This is on their bucket list. This is their goal in life. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and partition. Do not put riches on your bucket list. And understand this, and I'm talking to every born-again believer in the room. Late in your life, everyone will know what you set your heart on. And it will be either the Lord or riches because nobody can ride the fence very long. Man cannot help you. Money cannot help you. But I'm here to tell you with full assurance that Christ can help you. Jesus says this in the word of God. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And Jesus, as we look ahead to who he is, and what he can do. He made this statement to his disciples in the book of John chapter 14. A very simple sentence. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And then in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Man cannot help you. Money cannot help you. Christ can help you. When can your life come to an end? When you finally see your salvation. 
or and when you see Christ is your only source of hope. But there's one other thing. What did Simeon say? A light to lighten the Gentiles. That is hope. And the glory of thy people, Israel. And that isn't saying that Israel's glorious. That is saying that the God of Israel is glorious. When can your life come to an end? When you, as a Christian, realize Christ is your glory and not the other way around. Let me say some very, very critical and important things. First of all is this. Self-promotion is an empty pursuit. The Bible says, looking at the book, Luke chapter 14, and looking at um, verse 11, for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And that means brought low. And by the way, it didn't say could be abased or would be abased. It says such a person will be abased. There was a king. He was the most powerful king in the entire world at the time that he made this statement. But in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 37, King Nebuchadnezzar said this about Almighty God. He said, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Self-promotion is an empty pursuit. And having said that, I want you to think about this. And as somebody would say, etch it in your frontal lobe so that you will never forget it. And that is this. Ambition is the polar opposite of spirituality. When you realize Christ is your glory, understand this. Maybe it isn't yourself. Maybe you're not trying to promote yourself. Maybe you're not trying to be the one that is somebody. But you have literally put all your investment and all your hopes in somebody who is somebody. And I'm here to tell you, whoever is somebody someday will be a nobody. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. If you have a hero someday, they will be a zero. Which draws us to this conclusion of what Simeon had to say. Your glory is found in Jesus Christ. And there was a man and he tried to be somebody. His name was the Apostle Paul. And he even had things. His name was the Apostle Paul. But he discovered something. He discovered what he wanted to be before his life came to an end. In fact, he says this, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss, for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Here's an important statement. And be found in Him. In other words, Paul said my identity needs to be found in Christ, not Christ found in my identity. The idea is I don't live for my glory and say, boy, God, aren't you privileged and blessed that I'm around? No. We live for God's glory. How important this is. In life, it's, it's not who you are. It's who you belong to. That's what's important in life. When can your life come to an end? When you finally see God's salvation. Heaven help 
the person who comes to an end before that. When can my life come to an end? When you see Christ as your only source of hope. And I'm here to tell you with great confidence, your life will become so much easier if you do that. And when you realize Christ is your glory, He isn't here to represent us. We are here to represent Him. When can your life come to an end? Could your life come to an end today? What is missing? We all will leave this world. Don't leave without your salvation. Don't leave without Jesus. The house is all fitted with bright, shiny lights. The tree is just perfect. Boy, what a delight. The gifts are all wrapped in paper so fine. The meal is prepared. Are we ready to dine? But where is Jesus? It's his birthday, you know. Oh, he's standing just outside the door, gently knocking. The stores are all filled with gadgets and stuff, and people are crowded, and some in a huff, because we've just got to buy those presents we need, because they buy for us. We return their good deed. But where is Jesus? It's his birthday, you know. Oh, He's standing just outside the door, gently knocking. The parties are going on all over town with good food and laughter and never a frown. Put on the dog, loosen up, and have fun. We've had a good year, and what's done is done. But where is Jesus? It's his birthday, you know. Oh, he's standing just outside the door, gently knocking. The churches are busy with holiday fare, with cantatas and programs and food for the poor, and folks come from miles to be entertained to get that good feeling each year at this time. But where is Jesus? It's his birthday, you know. Oh, he's standing just outside the door, gently knocking. World leaders are meeting to search and discuss some gracious way to get out of this mess. They've bullied their way into the corner they're at, but want out with their pride left fully intact. But where is Jesus? It's his birthday, you know. Oh, he's standing just outside the door, gently knocking. Well, get up, my friend, and go let him in. What good is goodwill without Jesus within? Do you not know why Jesus was born to pay for the sin that we carry on? So bring Jesus in. Let his light shine through you. Don't leave him just standing outside the door, gently knocking. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us in this special day, in this important time, and of all the things that we could find on Christmas Day, help us to find you, truly find you. Jesus, the name that means God is salvation. You are salvation to us. Help us to realize that you are the only true help for what we're going through. And please, help us to realize that if we're saved, you are the one who's our glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand together. The song is number 505. On this day, even today, which is a busy day, sometimes it's hard to find room for anything. Let's find room for him. Let's find room for Jesus today. Let's sing this together. Thank you. 